Hello everyone, and welcome back to Command of Modern Operations. Today, I am your host Kushan, and today I am going to be doing another Kushan Teaches CMO stream. Today I will be finishing up the air warfare tutorials. I've already gone through the flight tutorials and all the strike tutorials, other than number six, which I will be doing today. <clears throat> this is going to be the start. Sorry. Things are going to start getting a little more difficult. You may lose an aircraft or two on this one, and it may take some time to master it. Fine, you are facing an SA-10 battery. Not an easy thing to do. You should probably run this scenario at least three times. I'm going to run it once. If you guys want, want to run it multiple times yourself, feel free to. Run number one, cruise missiles alone. Just drive a point home that these are not a silver bullet. Well, they should be golden considering their cost. Don't worry about it. Don't worry, we will. It, it'll be quick to coordinate attack with lots of resources. This is the real tutorial, which is what I'm going to be doing. And run number three, leave the bombers at home and challenge yourself. More of a true scenario than a tutorial. Your forces are quite powerful and modern with a mix of weapon types and support aircraft. The trick will be to use them all at the right time and place. <clears throat> Your enemy is a... Red ba is at red base, and your mission is to close the air base. You know he has the following available. Battalion of SA-10s, S-300PMs. This is not the deadly SAM system you'll encounter in command, but it is close. If, you if it sees you, things will get ugly fast. Two tipsy 75 3D long-range air search radars. Quite good and hard to hide from. A squadron of 12 Eurofighter Typhoons. It's laundry day at red base, so it'll take them an hour to get ready. You'll want to have the base closed by then, or your day will go from bad to worse. You also know that you don't know everything about the enemy, which means that there's going to be another SAM system or AAA around the air base. The terrain is fairly interesting. You're in southern Algeria, in the area of the Tassel Niger National Park. Yes, I know I butchered the naming there. Um, and these are the Hogger Mountains. It looks like a spectacular place to visit, but in the interest of gameplay, I, I've plotted a couple of geomarkers with some easy to reference names. Big Ridge, Small Ridge, Highway, Side Road, Big Flat Flank, and the Sandy Flank. And then the back door. Table, anyone? Flat is not good if you're trying to hide from S SA-10. So, yeah, we're going to be using the ridges to hide from the S-300 battery. Your forces are modern Chinese aircraft and weapons. There is a good mix of capabilities, but as any, you ha they have limitations. We have an A-50 main ring. I think that should be... I think that should say... That main ring or mainstay? Uh, support mission, we have a CSA-003 Diamond Twin Star. This is a small commercial aircraft, which has been turned into an electronic sponge. Put on a support mission, leave the radars off. We have a Y-9G y Cub. This is a powerful electronic warfare aircraft based on the Russian AN-12 Cub. For those of you familiar with the venerable C-130 Hercules, the AN-12 is a slightly larger and more robust. Should be able to jam most radars, but as discussed in the last tutorial, nothing is a sure thing. JZ-8F Thinbacks. You have two of these older aircraft, which have the advantage of being able to fly quite high. Not high enough to escape the SA-10, however, so save these until after that is disabled. The HK-6K Badger. Well, these are heavy units that you would not normally see on a mission like this, but it's a tutorial... So we should introduce heavy bombers. The YJ-63 cruise missiles it carries are reasonably capable. Slow like most cruise missiles. It is terrain following, which is good, and has a decent warhead and a good PK. Use them properly, however, or they will be wasted. These bombers are the variables in the three scenario runs we've discussed earlier. The J-11 BS flanker. These are twin-seat flanker copies. Are deal for the complicated task of suppression of enemy air defenses. For this role, they are equipped with the AS-17 Krypton. Not as accurate as the American AGM-80 Harm, 
but it has a heavier warhead. J-16 Flying Sharks, another spin-off, the SU-27 Flanker. This one has some rather interesting standoff weapons, such as the LS-6 GPS Guided Glide Bomb. And the Q-5D Fantan, very loosely based on the MiG-19. The D variant is much more modern aircraft than the Heritage would suggest. Their job today is to close the runways with Durando copies, the Type 200-4 bombs. There are some laser guided bombs as well, but I wouldn't use them until the SA-10 is dealt with. Run number one. This won't take long. Simply launch four, your four badgers, fling your cruise missiles at the base, see what happens. You could try plotting courses for your missiles to see if that helps. You'll probably not probably note that of the 60 missiles, one or two hit the base. You'll probably also note that the many SA-10 missiles go blind or lose track. This is because the YJ-63 has the ability to terrain follow. An exer excellent advantage when many older cruise missiles don't have. So, uh, so in all, the attack was a failure. Cruise missiles on their own will have very difficult time inflicting significant, da significant damage on a target. Unless you have enough to saturate all defenses and hit hard. In this case, you'll need at least four times as many missiles as you have. Scenario number, or run number two, which is the one I'm going to be doing, and I'll get to that when I actually get in game here. So, Blue Air Base. There's our Q5s. These are MiG-19 copies. Durandal copies, and some laser-guided bombs. Our J-11s, J-16s, Cubs, our Badger. So something you'll note right away is we have no dedicated fighters here. So if those Eurofighters get up, my day is going to get really bad. I'm going to run it for a second to see. Nope, we're not going to get the location of the S-300. I didn't think we would, but... So I'm going to assign a couple of missions here. First off, turn off the place names, that's distracting. So you can see here, there's the small ridge, there's the big ridge. My opinion though should have been reversed, but I didn't make the scenario. There's the side road, there's the sandy flank, there's the big flat flank, there's what's called the highway. Notice that all these are open, which given there's an S-300 battery in play, those routes would be really dangerous to approach from. So that leaves, in my opinion, the only viable option is to come in via the ridges. So first thing I'm going to do is set up a couple of missions here. I'm going to call that Defensive ECM. How many Elon aircraft did I have? Okay, so I have one Elan aircraft. I'm going to put that over here. And then my AEW, I'll go ahead and assign over here. Back to the airbase. Sign you, offensive ECM, launch. Sign you, Elant, launch. 
assign you to AEW and watch. Make sure they get up first. So the goal here is going to be to use those ridges to shield my approach from the airbase. While we're waiting for the aircraft to take off, let's go take a look at what Gunner suggested in the briefing. So in this run, we will use all the aircraft and just for sport, we won't use missions for the attack. Feel free to set up missions for your AWACS, ESM, and EW aircraft, and then watch the rest in groups. You've got plenty of fuel, so no harm in having aircraft loiter a bit. I won't talk to you through every move, but there are just too many options. But we'll suggest the following. Lead with your J-16s in two groups, accompanied by the J-11s, also in two groups. Stay low. Put your badgers off to one or both flanks. Consider them your snipers. Have your recon aircraft handy and your Q-5 safe. Lobby a couple of glide bombs over the ridge. You'll have to climb to do so, so be ready to evade. When the SA-10s light up its radars, engage the glide bombs, launch the Kryptons, and I mean about half to three quarters of your AS-17s from at least two directions. Make sure the Cub is jamming in close. Once the Kryptons are about halfway to the target, throw a couple of cruise missiles for good measure. If you have a chance to shut down the Tip C 75s with your remaining Kryptons, but keep at least two just in case the SA 10 fires up again. Once the SA 10 has been hit, there's a good chance the radar is down. Test with another glide bomb. Keep hitting the SA 10. If it is not disabled, you will take too many casualties on the attack and your mission will fail. Now it's time for recon. Remember what I said about air defenses, layers. Just because the SA 10 is down doesn't mean the base is defenseless. When you find things, plink them with the glide bombs and even cruise missiles. Once you're confident the defenses are suppressed, go in with the Q5s and close the runways. Laser guided bombs will be good to kill aircraft on the ground. Fiber pound bomb for a $100 million aircraft is a good trade off. And job done. So wait for the support aircraft to get up. <clears throat> so the next thing to go up is going to be the Badgers. Good morning, Scooter. Um, they alternate. Not all of them are U.S., there's a couple um, in there, um, especially in the air warfare ones as well, where you have Russian and Chinese aircraft as well. The one to take out a um, air base, or the first one where you have to take out an air base, is also Russian aircraft. Not necessarily. Depends on the area you set it in. 
you did in the 80s, you could have, or the early 90s, you could have F-111s in there as well. Also, there's F-16s that are used in the strike role. So for reference here, I'm going to turn on plotted courses for everything. So everybody can see where I'm moving my aircraft to. So the Badgers, I'm going to move off to both flanks. I don't think I ever got to see an aardvark in person. If I do, I don't remember it. Got to see the F-117. That was a cool one to always see. Gonna order my aircraft not to go above 25,000 feet. That'll make diving down a little better. Actually, we'll make it 20,000 feet. There's the main SE a W component. Time to get the fin backs up. We'll launch them individually. And then I'll launch the rest of my force now. Just in groups of two. The Q5s are obviously going to be my main strike component. So we'll want to husband them as long as I can, keep them out of range. Uh, not that I've seen. Even something like the um, Amram's Pave Tech Toss is a little difficult to do. You can kind of approximate it, but it's not perfect. Slow my fighters down just a little bit. Otherwise, they're going to get really far ahead of the Badgers. So the objective here is going to be to use one or two of the. I need to turn the sound down. Sorry, I just did a full-on game reinstall this week or system reinstall, so some of my settings are still a little screwy. Um, so the goal here is going to be to use the glide bombs to essentially trigger the SA-5, which will then let all my Krypton's and cruise missiles um, be able to shoot at it. Move the rest of my force forward. 
move Recon up a little closer. Fold on my strike aircraft back here. All right, getting radar signals now. Those are probably going to be the Type 75s. I'm sorry, TPS 75. So we can see here from the signal that we have a bearing on it and a per pretty firm fix on the bearing. We just don't have range. There's the other TPS 75. Morning, Mikey. Yeah, cheap cheap bomb trucks are are good and bad. They're they're great for low intensity stuff, but I think in like a modern conflict, the chances of them actually surviving aren't very high. I think for that purpose, something like the Takano or another kind of, ins I don't want to say insurgency, but just something, you know, that will, for the low intensity stuff, you'd be better off with, I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily uh, propeller driven like the Takano, but it, it could be um, like a variant on the new trainer aircraft that Boeing is developing. Yes, it does support triangulation. Hey Doug, how's it going? All right, let's get the J11s and J16s down. So if we look at the ridge, the small ridge here is about three thousand. Uh, a couple spots where it's two thousand, but mostly about three to four thousand feet. The big ridge over here is about. About 2,000 to 3,000 feet. So I'm going to go about 2,500 on my fighters. I don't know. There, you'd be better off doing something like the turning the new Boeing trainer or something like that into an equivalent than trying to restart the F-20 production line. And actually, I'm going to change all these to AGL. Actually, I take that back. We'll leave that above sea level.
So already within cruise missile range. Yeah, you didn't know that the F-22 was shut down in 2012? I thought everyone knew that. What do you mean the latest and greatest? I mean, a lot of ways from what I've heard, the F-35 is actually a lot more advanced than the F-22. I mean, something to keep in mind about the F-22 is that it was designed mostly in the 90s. So working the glide bombs into position now. within range of my AS-17 Kryptons. So notice I'm staying basically all behind the ridge and where's the bomb okay so the badgers are moving in so I've almost triangulated the positions of those two tps 75s and for you to go to cruise uh oh, okay, never mind. Thought I locked up there for a second. So you down to loiter. Okay, time to pop up. Let's go to 12,000 feet.
Well, this is interesting. I just did this scenario for a training demo like a month ago. Oh, okay. Oh, it's firing without turning its radars on. Crap. But I'm not... Oh, they flew over sand battery. Take it out, take it out. Yeah, stop dodging and like get out of range. Um Okay, while that was going on, I lost track and we found the SA-10. In fact, I've already lost an aircraft. So, I'm going to order my... AS-17s to fire. Then, for good measure, I'm going to throw my Do we have a firm enough fix on those to fire? I do. So I'm going to fire one at or two at each of the TPSs. And that group is safe for the moment. Just keep doing your thing. Go to loiter. This group. Turn in. Valid. Am I too low? Need to be at 10,000 feet. So go to 12,000 feet. Fire all four glide bombs. A race against time to see if the don't do the whole turning thing Okay, you're still too low. Okay, go up to 20,000 feet. You can see just how many of the AS-17s that SA-10 is eating up here. We got a hit. Got a couple hits. Okay, I think we actually took it out. We're not getting any search radars from it anymore, so it's time for the strikes to go in. So, looks like from our fighters, I have identified 
where most of the aircraft are. Runway access point, runway access point. Where's the runway? So runway there. Tarmac, tarmac, passenger terminal, tarmac, runway and runway, okay. So Durandal copies, you go after runway one. Laser guided bombs, you guys can go after the tarmac space. Fire two there. Fire two there. Randall copies. You guys can go after runway. Where's the other runway at? Oh, five twenty three. Laser guided bombs. You guys are going to go after. those two. Let it run for a second, see who's still available. Durandal copies, you guys are going to go after runway 0119. And then the last group, these guys are going to go after 1523, or 523, sorry. Do a recon pass with the recon number two. Come up to twenty thousand. This will tell us if the SA-2 is still, or the SA-10 is still up or not. I don't think he is. We've lost signal. I'm honestly not too worried about the TPSs. I prefer to go after things that can actually shoot back at me. Doesn't matter if they can see you, if they can't hit you with anything it doesn't matter if they can see you or not and yeah i'm oh, come on hit the wrong one and really i'm parading around right in front of it it should be firing at me by now
Okay, man pads. Yeah, the SA-10 is now no longer a threat. <laughs> um... And nothing else is emitting except for the TPS-75s. I still even have four Kryptons left. So now it's just a matter of bringing in the rest of the strike groups. I'm going to hold the J-16s back a little bit longer. They have four PL-12s and four PL-8Cs, which are Python 3s, just in case some of the Eurofighters do happen to get off in the next couple minutes. All right, so recon's done. Here comes my strike group. Should be a win. I may lose some of these aircraft here to the man pads or whatever AAA is defending the airbase, but my recon's not picking up anything. Just curious, what is the max altitude on the. Oh, 45,000 feet. I've had a lot of practice at this one. Now they come up.
Oh, out of weapons range. Wait, it says I still have four Kryptons left. But they're not showing up. Yeah, whatever's there isn't emitting. Oh, rapier platoon. Well, it would have been in the wind column had I actually spotted those. Nice! Got shot down right as it released its Durandals. And let me guess, they all missed. Missed! Built a spoon... Oh no, they got the hit. Okay, I don't think that side panel's actually correct because we're not. I'm not seeing the range ring for where my um, Kryptons should be. So one strike group left, coming in with Durandals for the other runway. Uh, no, it's the Rapier. It's IR guided. Or no, never mind, the Rapier is command guided. Um, I think it's the Crotel I'm thinking of is IR guided. Um, Not that it matters, because I actually don't have anything I can throw at it. Um, is there a minimum altitude to the rapier? I don't think there is. 30 feet up to 12,000 feet. So, that's what I did wrong here. I came in too low. Doing that's just going to risk a more. No, I didn't. Are you? You're not bingo. I didn't order you back to base. No, I told you to attack. Or no, I think I hit B instead of B.
and they dove down on their own, so... Oh well, I'm probably going to lose both of these two as well. Unless the rapier batteries are rearming. A little late for that message. You just discovered an unidentified target on the ground. Remember what I said about layers of defense. Did you find this with your recon aircraft? If yes, that is perfect. Now kill the target before it can do any damage. Did you find it with sensors on the cruise missiles? Did you find this target with one of your strike aircraft? Uh oh, oh, oh. You may be in trouble. Get out of there fast and let the standoff weapon destroy it. You can come back for another run. Well, that's a little too late. Well, the good news is it looks like the rapier batteries are rearming. RTV, everyone, and I'll do another recon pass. I come in a little lower this time, maybe about 15,000 feet. Yeah, this is a gunner scenario. I believe all the strike tutorials were by gunner. So there it says, oh no, loadout. So there it says I still have two AS-17s left, but they don't come up on the weapon allocation menu. Yeah, they both show two AS-17s. That was interesting. I should have been able to shoot at those rapiers. Coming in for another recon pass. I don't think these two got hit. In fact, I know they didn't get hit. But I did hit those two tarmac space. So there are still some Eurofighters here that can take off. So damage both runways, heavy fire, heavy fire, heavy damage. Score of 50. Plus two J7 or J16 flying sharks. Those would have been the two with glide bombs. And then lost eight of my Q5Ds. I killed six Euro fighters, one TPS. Killed the SA-10 battery. Overall, not too bad losses. I mean, given given the age of the Q5. 
and some mismanagement on my part. And there's the Eurofighters taking off. So I didn't completely close the runway. No! Don't dodge, run! No. And go to Afterburner. <laughs> I hate that. He was getting he was gonna get away. <laughs> it wasn't even a death spiral. It's just he dodged when he shouldn't have been dodging. <clears throat> like he should have been in the clear on getting away. Oh well. Overall, I'll consider that a win given the opposition. I didn't quite close the runway as the two Eurofighters that did take off suggest, but heavily enough damage where I'm okay with it. I can't tell. Is this supposed to be a runway here? or Is that just the... Oh, so for whatever reason, the Afgas is the... is the leader of the airbase. That's weird. It normally defaults to the runways. Yeah, I wish there was uh, a couple of different options for automatic evasion of what to do, or at least some sort of doctrine setting for what to do, rather than just dive and circle. <clears throat> Yeah, because there's times where you want to dive and actually, like, engage, and there's times where you want to dive and disengage. Looks like those two Eurofighters are coming in on my OECM aircraft. Yep, there's the missile. I'm not going to count these two losses because those that Elon and that Cub are gone. I mean, there's no way they're going to make it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to count these losses. Yeah, they should go away from them, not, not towards them. Or, I'm sorry, they should go away, not towards, yeah. So, but that's going to bring it to the end of the strike tutorials. I'm going to hold off on starting the next ones, which are going to be the surface tutorials. Um, because I believe Apache just released a new version of the surface tutorials, and I want to go through them before I do them here on stream. And then I will go from the surface tutorials into the submarine tutorials. Yeah, I'm pretty sure those were meteors. So to finish up here, I got in about an hour left in the stream, so I will be continuing Team Yankee. Give me just a moment to change the stream title.
So left off last week with... I believe I just finished up a strike. Yeah, I just finished up strikes on these groups of targets up here. I have my A4Cs RT being now. Yeah, the magic telephone lines that seem to just be picking up ton of damage um, caps in place I think everybody else is still getting ready Fighters are good. They're got about two hours there. Recon. Where are my losses to date so far? So losses so far have been four A4Es, two AD6s, which the AD6s I lost to a gunboat because they came in too low. And one RE5C Vigilante. Enemy losses are... Two ammo shelters, one large building, one medium building, one power station, a couple of civilian junks, a couple of commercial boats, and commercial tugboats. I think at this point I've pretty much cleared all of the um, smuggling ships that are over here. The only thing that are really left are the patrol gunboats, which I'm a little, little hesitant to go at with. With um, I'm a little hesitant to go at with my eighty sixes because that's how I lost those other two. Ranger doesn't have anybody. Some strikes. So not too much going on at the moment. So far all my southern targets are gone. Middle targets I've hit but haven't completely neutralized all of them yet. And then I haven't hit any targets to the north yet. Barracks, reserve barracks, militia barracks, disposal site, and sorting facility.
Make sure I arm the Franklin air group. Fighters are ready. Skyhawks will be ready. Two and four hours. Other group of Skyhawks, two and four hours. Sea Sprite ready to go. Crusaders ready to go. Okay, so they're actually armed and ready to go. In theory, the Ranger should be going off the line here when the Franklin Roosevelt comes onto the line. But I can't remember if that actually gets swapped or not. Don't think I'm going to get another strike out of the Ranger. At best, it wouldn't be for about six hours. Nine hours would be better. Running low on ammo, too. So one load of Mark 82s left. Everything else is going to have to be Mark 83s, and even Mark 83s I'm getting low on the Enterprise. Still got some strikes left if I need them. Oh, the strikes so, so far haven't really been that effective.
This may not have been the best thing to play for the rest of the hour. I wonder if I can get away with a recon run. Come in low, do a quick heal run over here. Start off by doing that, and then where's my northern cap cover? So, northern cap covers the coastline. Think about maybe doing a recon run up north. Somebody looks like they're coming in on my jammer. So order two flights of F4Bs. One would hope that four F4Bs are enough to take out two MiGs, but we are dealing with sparrows here. I'm sorry, gotta be optimistic. If I'm optimistic, then they'll hit. Yeah, the Sparrow's a great missile. Oh, we spot an SA-2 battery. That's always nice. Probably pull you back. What do we got? Don't know yet. 
Tech aircraft. Turn off automatic evasion for now with them. Turn away. That's the safest. Course of action. There are TP. That group's going back to station. 2G 77.2 is inbound to the line. We'll be ready to launch first Alpha Strikes within one hour. They will relieve TG 77.3, which is due to go off the line after a 12 hour duty period. A new set of targets has been issued for Route Package 4, the area covering the coast from Thon Ho to Thon Pho, Nam Din, and inland to the border of, to the Laos border. Be advised that this area is likely to be heavily defended. Your privily issued targets will remain valid for attack. That would be this area right here. Put some more aircraft up on the Cap North. There's cap coming up. Southern cap's good for now. So I have my peace, or not peacemaker, my vigilante reconning the south. I'm going to launch another one to recon the central group of targets.
One thing I've noticed is that side looking radar doesn't seem to be that effective. So I did hit the military base pretty hard. That's nice. Triple A identified, triple A identified. Fly through the valley. <clears throat> Where's that other vigilante? When you get to here, start descending down to 3,400 feet. More AAA. I did hit the tunnel. Another AAA site. Pretty sure that one's landing. So I heavily damaged most, well, I don't say most, I heavily damaged one of my targets. I lightly damaged the tunnel. Curious to see what my actual damage to the telephone lines and the manufacturing park was. Another AAA site. one more pass just to verify.
Good news is that one should burn get enough time. Military base wasn't on fire as far as I could tell either, so that one may not burn. Another AAA site. Okay, so Southern Run is complete. As soon as he exits the range of the SA-2 battery, I'll RTB him. And then time to start focusing on the Northern Recon. Northern Recon is descending down to 3,400 feet. Double check that that's actually above AGL, which it is now. You can RDB. 3,400 feet will put me below the 3,500 feet range of the SA-2 missile. Uh, I do have access to the professional edition of CMO. Uh, is it really different than CMO? Um, yes and no. The interface is still the same, but there's more analytical features in PE. And there are some functionalities as far as some weapon systems that aren't available in CMO. But the basic game interface is the same. Well, C CPE is actually based off of Commando, not CMO, but... Let's go to speed up to cruise on Hoodell's number two here. Just in time, too, because we just overflew a triple A battery. Another mobile site. I don't have super high expectations that the Vigilante here is going to survive this run. But I need to do recons on my targets up here before I strike them. Unlike the other ones, this one's likely to be heavily defended. And this area down here was pretty heavily defended, so I don't want to find out what's up here by surprise. Um, I can't talk about that. To CPE or to CMO, Zan? SA2 battery... Likely to be triple A up here. the SA-2 fire at me. How is it firing at me?
I should be below its engagement envelope. Um, if you're talking about UI improvements, then what you see is what you get. If performance issues, then you're kind of on your own on that point because UI and performance-wise it runs fine. So I don't know what you mean there. Hmm. That was interesting. Still not sure how they were able to fire at me. That's, that's not where they're firing at. I don't know. Who is... I mean, that missile's gonna miss, but... I'm still not seeing why it's able to fire at me. What's its base elevation? 13 feet. So it's not higher than me. Change the course of that a little bit. Make sure I overfly my targets. Getting air fire control radars. I may have just tweaked some mix. Position my cap over a little bit. Uh, I'm actually reposition both caps over a little bit because I have a feeling one's gonna RTB. Turn off the blizzard, that's getting annoying. Um, Okay, so TG 77.3 is withdrawing now. To get some more cap up north. Yeah, st I believe Steam... Don't get me started on the Steam forums. Bunch of whiny little babies over there. And no, there's not a whole bunch of reports on the, st on the normal forum, so stop your lying. <clears throat> doesn't run on beefy computers unless you're... Doesn't need a beefy computer unless you're trying to run a massive scenario. <clears throat> Trolls like you annoy me. That's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, well, if you don't like it, you can always leave. <clears throat> no one's forcing you to be here and watch it. Ah, that's the response I wanted. Okay, we'll pull the vigilante back. Climb up. Hostile, hostile. Migs, you guys are free to engage. No, 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 no. Engage, not disengage. There we go. That's what I wanted.
Oh, spot another battery. Nice. Oh, no, don't retreat, guys. Come back. My fighters want to play. Lame. Cat North. Enemy mission. Cat North. I'm gonna pull him back. Readjust the cap. See if I can bait him a little bit. Okay, descend back down. And we'll make in. What are they firing at? I have no idea what this battery thinks it's firing at. Okay, so we can turn back in. There we go. Come on, chase the, uh, chase the recon aircraft. It's okay. I swear the fighters that are escorting it won't bite. Turn south. Go to military power. Go get them, guys. Fighter, fighter, we know they're fighters. Make 21s. Need to adjust a mission setting here. Um, weapon. Um, want to get with VVR. Mission specific air to weapon expended, allow targets to use air to air guns. That's what I wanted. And cap south should be set to the same thing. That. Oh, I forgot. I'm dealing with uh, phantoms, so I don't have guns anyway. So where's the group that just has... 
So that group can already be. Need to get more cap up there. Launches group. Launches group. Assigned a mission. Cap north. Go. That would be a Talos launching. Although a long shot for a Talos. Um, Alright, so RTB when you expend your sparrows. Get out of there, get out of there. Oh, fighters coming in on my recon aircraft. I got two involved in that little engagement. I go to Afterburner if you've got it. Which, actually, you do. Didn't know the RA-5 had... Well, I guess it is based on the A-5, so it does have Afterburner. Which means I can outrun those fighters... Caps all RTB'd. Angle that to the south. Should probably order my uh, jammer farther south too. Their fighters are turning away. Slow down on the recon. Move out of range of the SA 2s. I would love it if that Talos actually hit that MiG 19. Oh, it's blind. It's going to miss. RTB. Just the limits of Cap North to take out 
of where they were punching in. Pull that back a little bit, pull that back a little bit. There's no way that Talos is going to hit. So it did take some system damage on the RA5. The ALQ61 is damaged. Lost my compass tie. Ooh, almost lost my... Well, good thing I don't have uh, comp disruption turned on. Otherwise, I probably would have lost my data link to it. What is the compass tie for? Compass tie is the radar warning receiver. Okay. Well, now that I've reconned out the middle set of targets, that's actually what they meant by formidable. Bunch of triple A, at least three SA2 sites, although I'm not going to count that that's it. Although those three sites right there are also threat in that target area too, plus the three that are directly on top of it. Um, so we got a fuel depot, sorting facility, Petroleum tank, stone bridge, and a manufacturing plant. So the manufacturing plant is the one with the most damage points. These other four targets up here don't have a lot. So see what the availability is of aircraft when that time comes. I'm going to take a quick look at my losses so far. So still the 2A2Ds, the 2A4s, the RA5. Didn't lose any Phantoms in that little furball. Um, I've now killed six, eight MiG-17s, four MiG-19s, and five MiG-21s, and a MPK SO-1... Which I think is a patrol boat. So, not too bad. Still got another 12 hours of the scenario to go. Which I will be continuing next week. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. And stay safe. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys 